Hi, this is Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here with another Friday Reads. We have had a crazy week, and we're not done yet. From last Friday to tomorrow, this Friday, we have crammed in three separate trips. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. So last weekend, um, we went up to Connecticut to visit my mom and her husband, spent the weekend with them, um, <laughs> drove home through the crazy New York traffic on Sunday, got home about three or four in the afternoon, unpacked, showered, repacked, <laughs> had a quick dinner with our son, and then hooked up our camper and left again. And um, this was my way of squeezing in a tiny little 36 hour respite, just a quiet, peaceful break. Yes, it was more travel, but the place we went is only 45 minutes from home. We stayed on our favorite campsite and Sunday through Tuesday, it's very quiet. We were just about the only ones in the loop. Um, it's our favorite campsite because it is right on the water, on the Elk River, which flows into the Chesapeake Bay. So we had a wonderful time. It was extremely relaxing, very peaceful. Um, I'm putting together um, a vacation video not technically a vlog because this is gonna be made up of photos instead of video, but um, I think you'll enjoy it. So I'll post that next week. It was very relaxing and we really needed it because we got home Tuesday night and Friday morning, tomorrow, we leave again. <laughs> um, I had rent, I've rented a lake house for us and our sons and their girlfriends for the weekend. We did this last year in Pennsylvania in the Poconos and it worked out wonderfully. It was October and it was a beautiful weekend and we just had a very nice, relaxing time. With our sons grown now, um, they're 25 and 29, you know, lots of times when we see them, it's a family event or a holiday and there's so much going on and it was really nice to just relax with them. So I was attempting the same thing this year. Unfortunately, um, this is the weekend that I found a house. This time it's in central New Jersey, a beautiful glacial lake. Um, the house is right on the lake again. Unfortunately, it is. we are supposed to get heavy rain all weekend. So, it should still be plenty of fun. We're going to bring games. There's a pool table and foosball table at the house. Um, we may not be able to kayak this time. We're going to try to squeeze in a campfire in the fire pit Friday night before the rain starts. We'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, it's been crazy. So I am very much enjoying my books. They are my my little bit of peace in all this crazy running around. I am still completely immersed in the RIP challenge. That's reading darker stuff for fall. I'll link to my RIP video down below. And in September, I am also doing series September. Um, I'll link to that down below as well. That's, this is my bingo card. Um, so my current print book is A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. This is the first book in her Alex Carter series about a wildlife biologist. I have been dying to read this ever since I first heard about it on the Book Cougars podcast. I'll link down below. You have to check it out. It's my favorite book podcast and they've interviewed Alice Henderson. And as soon as I heard their discussion of the book and their interview, I got this for my husband. And I also got him the second book in the series, um, A Blizzard of Polar Bears. So the idea behind this series is this wildlife biologist, Alex, travels around the country and beyond um, doing wildlife studies to help endangered species. 
So here, well, first of all, the book opens with action right off the bat. In the very first chapter, Alex is in Boston where she's been living, not happily. Her favorite place is out in the wilderness, not in a city. But she, she did an environmental impact study um, and found on a piece of land that was supposed to be developed, found some rare bird. And so she stopped the development. And so she's at the ceremony declaring the, the area protected land and a gunman, somebody who works for the developer who says he lost his house because the development project didn't go through, comes with a gun to this opening ceremony and starts shooting people. So that's how this book starts. It is action right from the beginning. And the very that very night, that same day, Alex is really shook up because the gunman did turn his gun on her. She was really the the focus of his anger because she's the one that stopped the development. So she's really shaken up, but she gets a call from her old professor at Berkeley who says he's got a new project up in the mountains of Montana studying wolverines. And he thinks she'd be perfect for it, that she'd really enjoy it. The catch is she has to fly out that night because the guy who has been doing the work had a family emergency and had to, had to leave. So she does it. Alex hops on a plane that very night, flies into Missoula, rents a car, drives it to this little town in the middle of nowhere, drops it off there, and there's someone there to meet her and pick her up and drive her to the site. So this site used to be a ski resort. Its heyday was like the 20s and 30s. It has been shut down for a long time. And now um, an environmental conservation organization has purchased the land as part of a, a land trust so that it can never be developed. It's a, an area to protect the wildlife. They are particularly concerned about wolverines because because of climate change, their habitat is shrinking. Um, they like being way up in the mountains. When they have kits, they build their dens 10 feet deep into a snowbank. So there needs to be a lot of snow. So Alex goes to this old ski resort to do a, a population study of the wolverines find out if there are any left, where they are, how many different adults and, and kits there are. Um, and so she's really excited about this, but right from the minute she gets there, it is clear she is not wanted. The local townspeople, the closest town is 26 miles away, but the locals, most of them are not happy she's there. Um, making this trust on the land, prevents the ranchers from using the land as grazing, prevents hunters from using the land for hunting and trapping. A lot of people are unhappy about this. And things start happening almost as soon as Alex arrives, threatening things. And to cap it all off, this deserted ski resort where she's staying is pretty creepy. <laughs> like, um, her friend in California tells her, just don't watch The Shining. <laughs> and that's pretty close. <laughs> so I'm about three quarters of the way through. I am loving it. It was the perfect read while camping. Um, I love all the wilderness and outdoor stuff. Um, it's fascinating about the Wolverines, but this is also an action-packed thriller. Things are happening on almost every page. It's very fast-paced. It's a gripping story. I'm really loving A Solitude of Wolverines, and I definitely plan to read A Blizzard of Polar Bears as well. On audio, I'm not going to say too much about this because I talked about it last week. I listened to Destiny of the Republic, A Tale of Madness, Medicine, and the Murder of a President, which it was a book group book, 
but it actually fit the RIP theme pretty well. Didn't work for series September. But um, this is by Candace Millard, who is an outstanding nonfiction writer. Highly recommend her books. My book group previously read The River of Doubt, which is about Teddy Roosevelt's trip down the Amazon. Um, this book, it's about President Garfield, who before I read this, I couldn't have even told you when he was president. It was 1881. So as I mentioned last week, I learned a lot but also, and this is Millard's talent as a nonfiction writer, she writes narrative nonfiction as if it were a novel and it pulls you right into the action. It actually begins in the middle of some action. And she's got dual narrative threads of President Garfield's childhood and early years and rise to the presidency, which he did not seek um, something that would never happen today. <laughs> he really didn't want to be nominated. Um, but also at the same time, you're getting the life story of his assassin, who truly was mad. I mean, he was incredibly delusional. The reason, well, for starters, he thought he helped get Garfield into office because he wrote a speech that nobody ever heard. I don't think he ever even sent the speech to Garfield. And then he figured they were best buddies. So he thought it was a great idea to ask that he been be named as ambassador to France. Yeah, posting in Paris, why not? I mean, he thought all of this was just completely reasonable and then got mad when he wasn't made ambassador to France. And to be clear, Garfield never met the guy until he shot him. So crazy story, but also Garfield's president, well, he, there wasn't much to his presidency. Four months actively being president and two months bedridden after he got shot, which is sad because it sounds like he was a really good guy who would have made a great president. Um, but the other thing in that subtitle is medicine, and that is woven into the story as well. We learn about Lister, who did the groundbreaking research on germs and antiseptic, keeping, keeping the surgical field clear during surgery, uh, clean during surgery, which was unheard of at the time. In fact, that's why Garfield died. Unfortunately, the doctor that was taking care of him didn't believe in any of that and was like digging around in his wound with dirty fingers. It's really, there are some parts of this that are pretty gross, <laughs> but it gets into the medical stuff, the, the medical history, um, Thomas Edison and Alexander Graham Bell. Bell actually tried to save Garfield's life with one of his inventions. So fascinating book. My book group all really enjoyed it. Um, the average rating was about eight out of 10, which tells you how much we liked it. And I have just started a new audio, um, but I really know nothing about it yet. So I'm just going to tell you what it is. Um, this, I thought this would fit for series September. This is an Agatha Christie book. Murder is Easy by Agatha Christie. And this is supposedly book three in the Superintendent Battle series, um, of which she wrote four books. So I've never heard of this character before. I just happened to have this on audio. So I thought that it fit with series September and the RIP challenge. I only just started it last night. And then my husband started talking to me while I was listening. So I have to go back and re-listen. <laughs> but it's Agatha Christie. I'm sure it's going to be great. So that's me this week. What are you reading and listening to this weekend? Let me know in the comments down below.